What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another review. This time we're taking a look at Coming to America, directed by John Landis, starring Eddie Murphy. Coming to America is one of my all-time favorite comedies ever made. I love this movie. I don't love this movie because of its story, because of it has an engaging storyline. Because it really doesn't. This movie is just a, another romantic comedy with a Prince and the Pauper tagline pretty much attached to it. That's not why I love this movie. I love this movie because of the actors, because of the characters, and because of the... And just the interactions in general is what makes Coming to America one of my favorite comedies of all time. This movie came out at the height of Eddie Murphy's popularity. And <clears throat> I actually thought that Eddie Murphy, performance-wise, I like him in this movie. This movie gave a different wrinkle to Eddie Murphy as an actor. Like, he wasn't his over-the-top flamboyant self. I think the fact that he played this movie more straight than he usually does adds to his character of Akeem, this royal regal prince from an African country of Zamunda. So, just by that alone, why would this why would this uh, prince act so over the top and flamboyant? He's not. He's going to act very regal, very pristine. And I thought Eddie Murphy really gave the character of Akeem a a, a royal charisma and a royal radiance to him, which is why. And the fact that what Akeem does everything he does with a sense of pride. It really that, that's also where the comedy comes comes from comes from as well. Like when Akeem first goes to America with Semi. You know, they get a job working at McDowell's, which is pretty much this movie's parody of McDonald's. They're pretty much, you know, janitors in a way. And Akeem, you know, does his job with pride, and that's where the comedy comes from. And again, Eddie Murphy pulls it off. On the flip side, you have Arsenio Hall, who as I mentioned was the character of Semi. I think Arsenio Hall is the unsung hero of this movie. I thought he was absolutely hysterical as Semi. And I also and I also love the many different roles that both Murphy and Arsenio Hall, you know, portrayed in this movie. You no, know, uh, one of my favorite scenes is one of some of my favorite moments of this movie take place in this bar called the Mighty Shark, where Murphy and Arsenio Hall along with Clint Smith play these uh play these old barbershop men who are just constantly having conversations about boxing and just random stuff. And you have this old Jewish man named Saul, who is like a friend of them as well. And it's just the bantering between these three actors is what makes is what makes those characters come to life. It was make those interactions funny. You know, Eddie Murphy as Mr. Clarence is hilarious. You know, Arsenio Hall as the um, as his friend uh, is funny. Is also is just equally as funny. Uh, I think Arsenio Hall is more remembered for this movie as opposed to Eddie Murphy in a way when you really break it down because. In all of the quoting of this movie and all the memorable moments that this movie has, I come to realize that most people remember Reverend Brown, and which is which is a character that Arsenio Hall portrays in this movie. The good Reverend Brown. And, and during the whole Black Awareness rally scene, which is absolutely hysterical. We have Eddie Murphy playing this character of uh, Mr. Randy Watson and his band Sexual Chocolate. That whole seven other movies. Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall, more or less just playing side characters in disguise, but it works. And it's a nice, and it's actually a good tribute to Peter Sellers and the multiple roles he can he can do in a, in one movie. And I thought Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall, to me, the true comedy with those two comes from when they're playing, portraying the second to third uh, third Terry characters. That's where they really come to life as actors. And to me, those characters are more remembered than than uh, Akeem and Semi. That, that, not to mention that that's not to mean that Akeem and Semi don't have moments to themselves because they do. Uh, one of the most memorable scenes is where they uh, is where they get into a, a conflict with this holdup guy played by Samuel L. Jackson in one of his early roles. It's a fun scene and I like it a lot. Not only that, I thought Murphy and Hall just in general they have really good on screen chemistry with one another and I buy them as being very very close friends and I'm actually kind of shocked that Murphy and Hall. Aside from this movie, I can't recall any other movies they've done together as a comedic duo. I think this movie was only scratching the surface of what these two can do as a tandem. It's kind of a, a shame that they didn't really do much. Uh, hopefully, Coming to America 2, the sequel, the unwanted sequel, you know, can cap recapture the magic th that these two men had back in 1988. So I, I don't have hope. I have hopes for the sequel. But if this, but if it has the same magic and the same you know vision as this movie, then I think I can give that. See, then I think I can give it a pass. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about the supporting cast now, which is loaded with a who's who of names. So you have John Amos who plays Cleo McDowell, 
the owner of McDowell's and the father of Lisa, who is a woman that Akeem is pursuing while in America because Akeem, through his, father, through his father the king, played by James Earl Jones, is stuck in an arranged marriage and Akeem does not want to have a woman that he can just boss around. He wants to have a woman who could be on the same equal living playing field of him as, a, as an intellectual and have her own personality, which is why he goes to America under the guise of him wanting to sow his royal oats. <laughs> I want to say right now, I think Eddie Murphy and James Earl Jones as the king and prince of Zamunda, I thought they played really, really well off one another. And I would have liked to see more scenes with Murphy and Jones because I like the whole father and son dynamic between these two. Uh, I think Marge Sinclair, who played uh, Eolion, the queen, I thought she was kind of underutilized in a lot of scenes. In a lot of, in a lot of scenes. Uh, I, 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 other than that, I thought Marge Sinclair brought a elegant radiant as portraying the queen of Zamunda. And I would have liked to see more scenes. I would have liked to see more having interactions and, and her and Lisa having conversations about what should happen about what they can do with Akeem when Lisa finds out that Akeem is of royal blood instead of having the king pretty much chase her off King Jaffe Jaffa but I do like but I do like the scene of John Amos sticking up for his daughter and saying listen man I'm gonna break my foot up in your ass so I love all that stuff not to mention I think John Amos like Arsenio Hall he's another unsung hero of this movie I think he's absolutely hysterical as Cleo McDowell, and I like the relationship that develops between him and Akeem as well throughout the progression of this film. You know, I enjoyed the stuff. And like I said, John Amos, he's a very, very funny guy. I like his work. Uh, like I, as I mentioned, James Earl Rose is really good in this movie. Paul Bates has a cameo in this movie as the as Ua, who is the bodyguard of Akeem. I thought he was fine as well in the in the brief little scene season. As I mentioned, Mark Sinclair, I thought in in the few scenes that she was in, I thought she was fine, though I thought her character could have a little bit more expansion upon. Sherry Headley, who plays the love interest of Lisa, I thought she was good in the role. And I like the role the budding romance between Akeem and Lisa. It's not it, it, it feels more like a natural romance and not like a forced romance. Like the movie takes the time for Lisa and Akeem to get a, you to get accustomed to one another. Which is why when people say that this romance is underdeveloped, I don't understand what they what they're talking about. Like the movie takes its time for these characters to develop a romance. They don't fall in love right away with each other. Akeem, you know, he's infatuated with her, but Lisa, it takes her a while. And I like all that. Not to mention she's she's with Daryl, played by Eric Lasalle. In one of the more famous moments of this movie, Eric LaSalle, who is the face of Just Let Your Soul Glow, which is a running advertisement that plays all throughout this movie. It's utterly hysterical. And if anything, aside from Reverend Brown, this movie is also remembered for Soul Glow, which is fantastic and awesome to itself. And I actually like Eric LaSalle as, uh, as the boyfriend character, Daryl. He, he gives him that right amount of cocky arrogantness arrogance and i thought eric lasalle played it really really well and i like the little scenes where he's constantly antagonizing akeem in in certain bits i don't like to see more of it to be honest with you but that's just me <clears throat> i thought that stuff was funny uh the actress who played patrice lisa's sister i thought she was fine as well she did a good job didn't really need her because she doesn't really serve any purpose to be honest with you i don't know why uh, Frankie Vizon, who plays the landlord while Akeem and Semi is in, in New York. It's Frankie Vizon. He's awesome. He's hilarious. And I love him as the landlord in this movie. He's one of the more memorable characters as well. And also, D Ralph Bellamy and Don Amici from Trading Places make this nice little cameo reprising their roles as, <clears throat> as, uh, as uh, Mortimer. And uh, uh, I can't remember who the other brother was for some reason. I uh, damn, I can't remember. But uh, Ralph Bellamy and Don Amici reprised their roles as the uh, rich brothers from Trading Places, now playing homeless men that Akeem gives like money to. And so that was a nice little cameo and a nice little nod to another great uh, comedic movie done by John Landis. Uh, speaking of which, from a directorial standpoint, I thought John Landis did a really good job directing this movie. I think from an overall production design, I like the juxtaposition between Zamunda which looks like, like this radiant country that is so elegant and graceful. And then you juxtapose that with this concrete jungle of New York, of Queens, New York, which is just, you know, gritty, grungy, and just run down. And I like the juxtaposition. You know, it really does feel like Akeem is in a place that he is not used to. And just him interacting with certain things, like asking what certain things mean and, and not understanding certain things and that naivety he brings, 
is what really makes him Akeem likable. It doesn't make him stupid. It just makes him likable and curious. And Eddie Murphy pulls off a fantastic job. And I got to give John Landis credit where credit is due. He did a good job directing the film overall. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's a hell of a lot more to talk about when it comes to coming to America. But those are just my overall thoughts on this film. To me, this movie gets a 9 out of 10. I love it. So, yeah. Those are my thoughts on coming to America. Let me know yours in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe. And I will check you back next time for more.